morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are and whenever you are. Welcome to the community live stream. My name is Chuck Tomasi from Service Now. I am the Service Now guy with the cool bow tie. And this is January 23rd, 2020. And I am here to bring you information about the service now community to give you the answers behind the answers, the thought process, the journey of discovery, the learning, the reverse engineering that goes on in my head so that you can bring that to your organization and be a more effective service now administrator and developer. That's the goal. That's what we're going to get to. Good morning, Drew. Good morning, Paulo, Chad, Alan. Good to see everybody joining back in the community. And I will get started. If you are watching on YouTube, thank you very much for joining us. If not, why not? You should be subscribed. You should get the notifications. Turn on the little bell. Get the notifications. Let me see if it is working today. I heard it just as the show was starting up. And yes, we have our Twitch one right there. We've got our YouTube one right there. And you will get notifications just like that. That's got the mobile device thing working again. Uh, and good morning, John. Everybody's joining in all around the world. Appreciate it very, very much. So I also apologize about the audio yesterday. For whatever reason, when I went back and looked at the stream after it was recorded and posted and everything, the audio was off a little bit. It was like a two seconds behind. I don't know what was going on. Actually, the audio was on. The video was behind. And it was kind of going slow, fast, slow, fast. It was doing this really herky-jerky thing. So if you watch me type, it wasn't a big deal. But the mouth, when I talked, was out of sync. And I don't know what that was all about. Hopefully, we'll get that cleared up if it's not already today. I don't know if it's happening during the live stream. You tell me. See if that was even close to synchronization. Quarter second or so I can live with. But, but uh, two seconds, not so much. So, let's go ahead and get started again. Subscribe, like, you know the drill for YouTube, and also available on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash now community. Hope to see you there. If you are if you've got a question about the community, about, excuse me, about service now, or your instance, or a script, or something, this is what you're here for. This is the community. Community.servicenow.com. That's what's behind me. That's what we'll be spending the next hour or so working on and sharing and learning 
and exploring all that good stuff. Community.servicenow.com. Don't forget, there are multiple spaces in here. I saw somebody post a problem with their instance, their personal developer instance, and said, hey, it's not available. But they put it in, I think it was IT service management. If you get it in the right place, you got a better chance of people solving it. I know that the people who can fix the personal developer instances hide it out and watch the instance help section. So please post them to the right section and you'll get a better chance of getting it. Otherwise, you're just throwing you know, a letter in a bottle in the ocean and hoping something happens. So, all right. Sounds like the audio is good. I'll watch it again on the live feed later. Thank you very much for the feedback. If you haven't already done so, please go over to developer.servicenow.com. I just naturally hear a ding on there, whatever it is. <laughs> it's, it's just become a programmed response. And it's not available yet. Yeah, I checked under manage instance. It, 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 I thought it might be today, but when I said action upgrade instance, it says you want to go to New York patch four hot fix one. Not right now. I'm in the middle of a show. But other things you can find besides your personal developer instance, of course, are the documentation on the APIs for your server APIs. We, we may reference this today in today's show just to uh, get the latest and greatest and any parameters we need to know. We may check out the documentation. There's some good documentation if you haven't seen that over there. There's the free learning plans you can get, the API documentations, blog entries. Keep your eye on this space. Andrew is going to be posting like crazy. In the next few days, this is where Orlando content comes out. So this is going to be your first source, what you can share on LinkedIn and all that good stuff. And don't forget about events. We've got meetups. There's a couple tonight in Minneapolis and Charlotte. If you're in one of those areas, I won't see you. <laughs> Sorry, I can't be at every event and every time. This would require time to travel and some sort of quantum theory where I could be in two places at once. Wish it could happen. Not going to happen. The, uh, the, if you want to join a meetup, then certainly, let's see, we got to have our meetup.com page over here. Meetups all over the world from the frozen north to the frozen south. I guess. Uh, the warm south, the tropical climates, uh, all over. We've got 
at uh, 63 chapters and growing. It seems like it was just, what, 40. So, it's wonderful. Seeing some great growth in there. I encourage your friends to come along, even if they are not developers, if they're administrators and want to learn to be developers, if they want to have a discussion, ask questions, and get into this. Great place for developers to get together and network and share and learn. Kind of like this, only on a larger scale and in real life. So meetup.com slash pro slash service now dev program. We also have a number of events that happen. Service now user groups, webinars, in person conferences, and of course, one of those conferences that's all over at servicenow.com/slash events.html. One of those conferences, yes, it's the big knowledge conference every year. May 3rd through 7th in Orlando, Florida. And we will be showing a lot of Orlando features, which is coming up real soon. Can't wait for Orlando. Lots of great stuff. Uh, you may have seen the blog, excuse me, the community entry. I got a notification this morning. There are some RTP release notes. I, there was a link. I didn't know where that link came from. Uh, there's a question that's been lingering. Is when will we be able to use GitHub through a mid-server? That article said in Orlando. So I can neither confirm nor verify that or deny it or whatever until, <laughs> until we have early access released. So you may see little rumors or leaks like that. I don't know where they're coming from or can confirm them. We have Leandre from Prague. Awesome. I don't know if I've ever talked to someone from Prague before. If I have, I apologize. Guys, old guy memory, meet lots of people. So I'm gonna go with that excuse. That's knowledge. If you don't know about it, check out the site. Hands-on learning, networking opportunities. Yes, there will be some party and fun. Lots of great stuff on the show floor. Uh, I plan to be there. That's the plan. But, uh, some, what, what, there's a phrase one of my friends uses. If the, the, the good Lord willing and the water doesn't rise or something like that. I'll, I'll have to remember what it is next time I talk to me. He says it as we as we as we depart. Uh, 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 see him once a month. So let's continue on after knowledge comes webinar. So 
join us February 18th to get a good tour of Studio. Studio is our IDE that you can use to keep track of all your uh, application elements and changes and use the app repo and source control and all that good stuff. You can see the bit.ly link on the bottom to register. So get signed up for that. Craig's stuff will be giving us a tour through that environment. If you haven't used it before, and I know there are some of you out there who haven't, you're still old timers like me, and you go, I know where business rules are. I can find them. This is much easier because you don't have to jump around a dozen or two dozen different application menu options. And any script we write today will be posted to GitHub at the bit.ly link you see there. Uh, bit.ly slash and SN dash CLS service now community live stream. That's what that stands for if you're ever wondering. And uh, it'll be in a dated folder with today's date. 2020-01-23. If you don't see the folder, it means we didn't write any script today. So check that out. I've got all the code back about a year and a half. I think we started mid-2018 posting the code on a suggestion from a viewer. I said, hey, can you share the code? I said, yes, yes, we can. And, and keep track of that. There will be a link in the blog post on the community with a link to all the articles with this video embedded with a link to what the GitHub repo and also the YouTube will also have a link to the it, it just it's the web you know you kind of make it your own web to do that kind of thing the if you if you want to learn more about learning JavaScript on the novel platform, of course, go watch my series that I put out about six months ago in mid-2019 at bit.ly slash sn-learn.js to learn JavaScript. It takes care of every, every, starts off with syntax and variables and comments and right on through a script address API. Yes, you will build a script address API by the time you're done with that. And can't forget one more plug for the little dummies book at SN NCAFD. If you think that's kind of crazy, it's no code apps for dummies, if you want to remember that. Get that to your business owners, your process owners, your line of business people, and uh, help them understand why they want to build their applications on the now platform. I did this with one of our marketing executive admin assistant 
challenge type people. She sent out a spreadsheet and said, hey, we need your 2020 budget numbers. And I said, why are we doing this in a spreadsheet? We have a platform. So we sat down for an hour yesterday on a Zoom conference call meeting. Walked through her spreadsheet and I said, I don't see anything in here that really says it can't be a service now application. We mapped out the fields into a table and in an hour we had the bones of a system of record. We didn't have any flow. We didn't have any business rules. We didn't have because all she's looking for is some calculations. I can do that. That's easy. But let's get rid of the spreadsheet. I said, her real, uh, it, it used to be ad hoc. It wasn't even a spreadsheet. I know, crazy, right? You're talking to the company that does all this digital transformation. And we still have opportunities because the organization grows. New requirements come up. You see this? This is the same thing in your organization. And you have new things to build. This helps people understand how to build and why they want to build on the platform. Because now that it's in service now, not only did you get the value of a spreadsheet in SharePoint where everybody can see it and access it, yes, we've got that as a centralized platform because it's on an instance with SSO. Everybody can log in and take a look. But we can also segregate out who can view, who can edit, who can do the administration, who can add vendors to the vendor list and have more control over that kind of thing, as well as generate better reports. And you know the value of the platform if you wouldn't be watching this video. So I know I'm preaching to the choir at this point. Take a look at that if you haven't already. In the meantime, we are going to get started with the community. John knows it. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. I think it's a Midwest thing. <laughs> because he was originally from Wisconsin. As I lived there for about 25 years, I should have known that, but I didn't. Thank you. I will endeavor to remember and fire it back at my friend Larry before he uh, before he says it to me. Let's do a refresh and get started on the community. Here we go. Success playbook. I am going to visual task board short description length. Let's take a look at, you know what, Dan from our community team mentioned this recommended section, and I have yet to look at it. Uh, there's either no community that matches the filter you selected, or you may have permission to view it. So what what does it look for? Let's 
look for uh, email template. Let's see what we get. And we will get a bunch of search results. But what is recommended to do at that point? I have it. Well, that brings up the search screen. There's no more recommended option there. Interesting. I haven't looked at recommended, and it doesn't seem to be recommending much to me. So what if we went to the developer community? Is recommended still there? I'm playing around at this point. No, there's no recommended. It's only on the main screen. And it doesn't seem to be doing much for me. Uh, maybe if we go to related forums, maybe? If I say developer community there, ooh, recommended it stays there, and it still says there's nothing recommended. That matches your filters you selected, or you may not have permission to view it. Okay, I tried. It was interesting. Let's go to unreply. <laughs> uh, content type question. All content. We want all content. Unreply. Having fun. Don't forget. Take a look at those. I mean, there were there was a point where I said, "Hey, why is my output in this particular format?" Didn't know that we had content list and activity feed right there. I was seeing it like, like this going. What? what happened? These are the things that I've been working on. What happened to my good old list? I don't remember switching that, but there's little controls on here. Okay, please start my instance dev 459225. Hey, look, it's in the instance help. Good for you. See my cursor's on today. My cursor is on today. Can we use flow designer to run before update of a record and how about writing script act, scripted actions? Three replies. Good question about Flow Designer. I don't know if everybody's uh, jumped on board with Flow yet. Don't think of it as the next generation workflow. I like to think of it about, about, uh, as the next generation business rules and scheduled jobs and inbound action triggers. So it's it's triggered on a number of things. Uh, in fact, I just updated my blog entry today for the scriptless scheduled jobs add-on that I did to put a condition field and script field. What did I do? I modified the uh, sysauto underscore script field or, or record to enable 
enable some scriptless capabilities. And a lot of people downloaded that. Thank you very much. But at this point, it doesn't really have as much impact. It was released prior to Flow Designer coming out. And now Flow, Flow Designer does that and more. So I really encourage you to take a look at Flow Designer. I put a banner right at the top or a note that says, hey, this was made before Flow Designer. You might want to go take a look because it's better. Ray confirms Flow Designer is awesome. Let's read up and what this person wants. I have a business rule which will run before update on incident uh, and validates whether your assignment group has been changed and knowledge ID is empty. Then it will pop up a message to attach to knowledge base article and does a set abort action. We were planning to convert this to flow designer. I did not find an action in flow designer uh, to set an info message on the form and do abort action in flow designer. How do I achieve this? Uh, if it needs to be done by actions, what should be the input variables be? Pretty deep responded uh, sometime yesterday. Client script or business rules are best suited for record validation. Hence, in this particular case, uh, i.e. for record validation, I would go with the client script or business rule. It can be done via condition filter. Uh, edit business rules on a form are not dynamic. The user must update the record for the change to be seen. This makes using client scripts the preferred method. I I have a different philosophy about that. You can use client scripts, but business rules just generally, especially if you're validating, they come in handy here because you can write codeless versions of them. Client scripts are client scripts. In business rules, you can validate. Yes, you have to submit, but the person, un, uh, like popular, un, un, unlike the popular myth where all oh, the lose all their work, they don't lose all their work. A, uh, an abort action. You get. I, I use this all the time in uh, one of the exercises to validate the due date. Okay, if you're putting in an issue, you don't put the due date in the past, or if you're putting in a uh, like a, a an ex Spends item transaction. You can't put the due date in the in the future. Very easy to do that with the condition builder. If due date changes and due date is before today, you throw the error message. You check the box. You put an error message in. It says, add a message, due date can't be in the past, and then you check the box that says, abort any other business rules, and it will do that. Uh, 
can't do that as easily with client scripts. So I also like the fact that they run server side. So you can dot walk in, you've got access to all the database and whatnot. So business rules have a, a little more power in my place. I use client scripts sparingly because just they seem more limited and more brittle than than other use cases. That, that's my philosophy. I know some people are in love with the client scripts. They come from uh, a full stack development area where they didn't naturally have access to the server script to access the database directly and get all those extra objects. But, but let's reduce the complexity. Why should I write a Glide Ajax client script to go to the server and get information to come back? Now, if it has to be dynamic, I change A, go get some results so I can display B. That's a different use case. But for validating data, I prefer business rules. That's my philosophy. You do what you want. Hello, pretty. As you said, I tried using a client script. I was able to set the error message through the on-change client script. But how can I do a set of board action through client script on the form? I would prefer client script for this step unless some same needs to be validated when records are being updated through the API. There's another good uh, reason is if you're doing things through like a REST API, especially considering what we also need to show uh, up in the message. Translations are a little bit easier on the server side as well. So that's a discussion. Uh, I'm going to throw that in there real quick. Uh, I'm going to challenge pretty deep on this one. <laughs> option and easy access to other data in the database without writing uh, glide ajax I'll leave it at that It's all okay. I'm not going to leave it at that time with due date validations without code. Thing. All right. Should email flows trigger on recipients or? Email flows trigger on 
who it's from is, is if I send an email to my instance, the email flow will try and look up chart.tomasiatservicenow.com in the CC user table and go, oh, well, let's use that. It It's to the instance. So I'm not sure I understand the, the question, or maybe I misunderstood it, Chad. One coin for that one. Copy attachment from one instance to another using REST. I think we have an attachment API, do we not? Could you please help me copy the attachment in the incident from one instance to another using REST? I'm very much new to integration, and I've gone through a few links, which are out of business rule, the incident table. Please help me. Encore, who has just been phenomenal on the uh, on the community lately, just really contributing. Thank you very much. Check the below link. He links to a couple of articles on how to do that. Uh, integrations are a larger topic. It's a bit like, can you please help me with the economy or investing? If you want to get even, even maybe slightly less complex, but, but there's a lot of questions that need to be asked before you do an integration. Uh, I'm not going to cover them all here, but think about, is it one way, is it two way, is it on demand, is it bi-directional, is it triggered by something? It, 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 I guess I repeated myself when I said one way, two way. Two way is bi-directional. What is the, the synchronization? What are the methods available on both ends? Obviously, we can get a service now, a service now instance uh, replication. So it's much easier. Might want to look at um, you might want to look at instance data replication. Okay. You can set up a table by table uh, replication with simple configuration. No code, no REST API. But this is a pay for solution. Which means it's going to be easier to get support and maintain. And let's put a link out to instance data replication. Where's my docs page? I don't think I have a docs page up there. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. Instance data replication came out in New York. 
has some enhancements coming out in Orlando. Wink, wink. And let's talk about instance data replication. Copy this link and HTML and put that in there. Don't be afraid to buy rather than build. <coughs> Moving attachments without integration is not that straightforward. It is now. Yeah, attachments just between files in general. a little crazy with the, the base 64 encoding and wow. Okay, knowledge base view count report. I might be able to help with that. Is there a way to run a report on the view on knowledge base rather than the individual article? No, because every time somebody viewed, well, you, there's, it, it needs to be tracked somewhere to run a report. So let's go through the tables. Actually, sysdb object, faster way to get there, is where the table definitions are kept. And the table name starts with kb underscore. It's going to be a knowledge base. So, related articles written in a category knowledge. KB knowledge, I believe, is an article. KB knowledge base is your knowledge base. And I don't think they track views there, do they? Well, let's find out what the columns are. Active approval. This is the reverse engineering, the exploration part. Sometimes you just got to dig in and look at the, what the table says. Icon manager view. We have a view. I have a font that's a little large. I'm on my personal developer instance, by the way. So I don't see it. There are, for whatever reason, my little clicker on the bottom isn't there. Really? version tunnel view nope uh, I don't see one but that doesn't mean you couldn't put one on there okay. by default I don't see a view field on KB knowledge base. That doesn't mean uh, so by the don't see a way. to do a report on any out-of-box V. 
fields. That being said, you could add really easy. You could add one. Could add one. with a business rule that increments the view count when someone, I don't know, reads that record. That seems like it might be a bit atrocious because because if they look at a knowledge base article and it does a query, it's <clears throat> does the right operation. <laughs> You need to define what that is. Simply reading a KB knowledge base uh, uh, base record might be too much. record also reads the information from KB knowledge base. Now, dot walking may get you in trouble here. So it could throw your Stats for a, 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 a throw your stats off. Let's do that. Now. It's an answer. It's not the solution. That's what the community is all about, right? Help. Help doesn't mean help means the answer. Change password error, updating, rearrange, refresh, playbooks, and ITSM notifications. Notifications. Let's look at notifications. I have. I think I have another one from notifications as well. Hi, community notifications is not triggering for approvers. Okay. Is there more to this? You need to enable the send to event creator flag. What's the test it again? Let me know. We kind of need more information on this. Kindly check the log and see if the notification is being triggered or not. If the notification is triggered, but email is going through. Then check if the user is in active state and not locked. Isn't there, I thought we had a debugging, debug notifications. I thought we had a playbook on how to do this. Notification property set. 
question, debug, debugging scripts, debugging classifications, subscription-based notifications, debug zing. Boy, if there was ever a need for an article, this is it. Have you tried the preview? Let me boost that up a little bit. Preview notification. form. It often reveals why someone wouldn't get a notification. Great for debugging. Let's go take a look at that. I want to show you something real quick. If you haven't seen this before, then pay attention. N notification. I am in global, so that's good. I can't spell notification this morning. Let's go to Email notifications right there. That's where I'm going. I don't know. There are shorter ways to get there with the table name, like oh, sys under email action. Okay. The if I take a look at say incident comment and I tell. I clicked it, right? I clicked it. Okay. See this button right up here, preview notification? It allows you to test these things. Kind of like Flow Designer does on records. And it says, if I use this particular incident record, it's going to go try and send it to David Liu because of the way this is defined. Who will receive it? Uh, the assigned to and the watch list. So a preview notification will tell you all those people that are going to get it. In this case, it doesn't. It's crossed out and it's red. But if you cursor over to this, it says it's excluded because their notification setting is disabled. Very helpful. Okay. I love that feature. It is one of the best. Of course, there are always the logs on that particular notification. If it did go out or didn't go out, it'll tell you what happened and where and which notifications it triggered. Lots of good stuff. There's also an advanced view, which is where that uh, send to event creator is. So if you turn on an advanced view, you get a little bit more information. Send to event creator is another one that's commonly missed, especially if you're doing the testing. 
say, hey, I'm sending it to me. Well, a lot of times there's no need to send mail to you. You're doing the action. You're making the comment. It would be very annoying if I got every email on every incident that I commented on and said, hey, I've fixed your printer or whatever it is. Please let me know. You put that in the comments and then you get an email with the same thing. Well, I know I did that. It would just be lots and lots of email. So having this off by default means I won't get that message. That can come back to bite you. In fact, if you do want an email, a notification sent to the person who generated it, then you say, send to event creator. And I thought this particular field does not have a hint on the label. See, some do, some don't. This is good practice when you're making fields. Put little hints on there so people can curse or over them and go, oh, that's what that does. Okay, keep those hints short. Another one of those best practices. How do you know where to do that? You say configure your label. And you would have to do this for each language. It is a language independent. And in the hint, it's a hint. A hint. Don't explain your whole priority process about urgency and impact in here because they do disappear after a while. Even the label one doesn't have hints on it. <laughs> the fields on the label field, the label table don't have hints. So this is about as long as I would get for a hint, because watch, no hands on the mouse, it does go away. That's actually up there longer than I thought. Maybe we took away the go away part. There, I didn't touch it. It timed out. So that's pretty long, but don't put into your uh, hints. If you need to make longer hints, I am way off track on this one, but, but hey, whatever. It's my, my show. <laughs> Go where we want. If you need to put in long hints, then you put in a URL to help them. Okay. Uh, let's put it in some subscribables and say, you know what? I was just looking at. Subscribable email, all right? Notification subscription. Let's say we want to put a link in here, assuming I can find it. Subscription based notifications. And I get that link address. And I want to put that on one of my fields. This is my 
personal developer, for instance, somewhere in here, and I put in URL, and I can put in a URL target, and now is no longer used starting with UI 15. That's fine. Starting with UI 15, that means it used to be something. Save that. Make sure I want to pull up an old UI 14. And under subscribable, it's now a linkable field that will bring up that document page. So think about that. It doesn't necessarily have to go to the service now. Docs, it could go to any page you've got. Maybe it's a knowledge base article on the instance. Maybe it's uh, an internal web page. You figure it out. But that's the way that I would describe the more complex things. Hints, great for short little ideas of what they're going to do. Okay. I'm off of that now. <laughs> Where were we going? Uh, I have a couple of things that I did want to follow up with. This one is a running discussion that's been going for a while on how to schedule a job with a business rule is triggered. It's been a long time, but it does have some new comments. Let's show all comments. Show all replies because there was one this morning. Made a good comment. I've got some code that migrated from the old community. And four years ago, two years ago, it's down here. I apologize for the scrolling. Sometimes it makes me sick. A year ago, a year ago, a year ago. Four hours ago. Hi, Chuck. I'm getting the below error when executing the notification from an event scheduled job. And they were kind enough to put in what the scheduled job looks like. Hope you can read that. It is running periodically every uh, uh, 10 hours. And they are going to queue this event, catalog item dot NOTI, and pass current. Ding! Okay, that should be the clue right there. Scheduled jobs don't have a current object. I don't remember a previous object either. Hey. Think about it. If you say, run this script at 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. or every 10 hours or the 10th of every month, what is current? What record are you looking at? You didn't specify table in here so that there is no current record. It's not like a business rule that's triggered on a database action. It's not like a UI action that's run on a one or more records on a table. There you specify a table. If you're not specifying a table, you probably don't have a current object. 
therefore, you need to do a glide record lookup, which is what I gave them. So it doesn't matter how, everything else looked fine. The event registration, this stuff, because it was saying, I don't know what an owner group is. So when it got down to this part and said, I'm going to send this, it goes, there is no current dot U underscore owner group. That makes absolutely no sense to me because you didn't give me an object to work on. So I said, here, if you want an object to work on, then I would do something like this. CGR equals new glad record on cat item. I think that's the table they were using. Uh, look for, for any records that don't have a null owner group. That came directly from their condition, which said owner group is not empty because you don't want to send out an email if that field that you're using to send is empty. And then cue the event, and here instead of current, you pass a glide record object. This is perfectly doable. This is the way scheduled jobs work if you're going to be writing a script. <laughs> My advice use Flow Designer, <laughs> right? <laughs> Why? <laughs> that would be good. So that is one that I wanted to mention. Scheduled jobs don't use current. If you're triggering events or looking for any other glide record operations, you got to roll your own. You got to build it yourself. That's the deal. All right, that, that's number one from my follow-up list. I also had an interesting experiment. We're going to try something. Never done before. On administering form annotations. There was a discussion that I don't know. I thought I had it in the community. I thought I had a community link for this. Arg. Let me see. Uh, yeah. You know what? It went something like, hey, can I change the color of the uh, annotation on my form from blue to green. That's an interesting question because I didn't think those were modifiable until I came across this, which says administer form annotations. This is in the docs. So we're going to play around with system UI form annotation types on my personal developer instance because that's a good place. Form annotation types. And look in here. Now, if you're not familiar with what an annotation is, let me give you a little idea. I don't know if there's any on here. And I don't even know if I have mine on. But there is an option toggle annotations on or off. 
no annotations on this form. Let's go put one on just so we can show what an annotation is. Use my handy dandy app that I like to beat up for my CLS videos. That's not an annotation, that's a notification. And there's none available on this form. If I go to configure form layout or configure form design, let's go to form design here just because it's easier to drag and drop around. I'm not in the right scope. So let's go to the right scope, CLS 528, and do that again. It says, you can't do that. You don't live here. Now, how did I know? It was all light gray. It didn't let me do anything. Down here, In field types, it's not in fields, it's not a field, it's not predefined. It is predefined, but it's not a field. Annotation, let's put an annotation up here that says Welcome to my person record. Please fill it out. All right. There are different types of annotations. I can do it a blue box. I can do a red box. I can do a line separator with some text on it. I can do section details. Very handy for doing the form layout and formatting and guiding your users and giving instructions. Section separators and just text. So they said, hey, my just text one doesn't look the way I want. So let's see what happens. If I reload the form, let's turn off whatever script that is. Now I have the ability to toggle annotations on or off. Welcome. This is just text and it's blue. They said, I just want text. Just text, not a blue box. Because that, that looks an awful lot like. That's why I used form designer, so I don't have to jump between. That looks an awful lot like an info blue box. Reload that and I have the same box. Why isn't just text just text? So let's go back to form. Annotation types. Good morning, Moses from Australia. We truly have encircled the earth now. Thank you. The there is text, and 
and you'll see in here, granted this is global, so I'm not looking at it. I have it's space, there's no style. Interesting. Info, info blue box has no style. Is it a permission thing? Is it a scope thing? Why am I not seeing this? Because it's looking suspiciously empty. Let's go through these. This is info blue box. Again, I'm exploring. I don't about this until I play with it. Order top two pick solid black. That's a line separator. Section detail is padding 10 px. Section separator has no style. Is there something on this record? I'm not seeing your form layout. It looks suspiciously let's see application is in there. Display name. I don't think we need that. Protection policy. There really isn't a whole lot in here, is there? So what if we created our own? Let's have some fun. Let's go back here. List new. And we'll just call this one simple. We'll play around with up omit space or later. If we just create a new one called simple. Go back and reload the form designer. Theoretically, <laughs> I can't get the right. This is going to be annoying. I should have picked a global record. Reload that. And theoretically, I should have simple in here. Yay! I made a new form annotation style. Didn't know you could do that. Let's see what it looks like. I'm going to guess it looks like a blue box. Alright, so let's go back to my person record in my history and oh it's just text well that was easy I have no idea how to get a blue box then unless I write it all myself if we want to make it bold we can put it in some CSS. Yes. Or meditation type. Simple. I can click here to edit. And let's put in. Uh, Font weight bold, and we'll call 
this. Simple bolt. We can do an insert and stay. Oh, we can't do an insert and stay because we are editing it in the wrong scope. That's all right. We'll do an update. Let's see what happens. Refresh that. I love it when I get surprised by something like that. Let's do simple, well, simple, bold. We don't have anything to say because now it doesn't think I changed anything. Go back to our person, Harry Mud. And that is, in fact, bold. Hard to tell, but it is bold. We could change the font size. We could change the background. We could put a border on it. All that lovely stuff that you can get with some of the other ones. Really need to turn that off. But you could put a block of simple text in there. So for meditation, didn't know that. Learn something new. I like it when I learn something new. Finally, co-worker and I were having a discussion about how to deprecate a field. I am pretty religious on don't delete stuff in service now unless you absolutely, absolutely have to. Like it's screwing something up somewhere else. Okay, and even then, it's it's very limited. So if you I've I haven't done this in a while, but, but I have done it before. The idea was, hey, let's make this fight field no longer visible to the end users, especially on reports. People are doing reports, and it's just not working out. So let's go back to, did I close my developer instance? I did. Wrong tab. Let's go back to my app. And let's say, for example, on my person record, I no longer use the parameters field. Okay. Uh, it's probably not a good one. Let's no longer use the URL field. Oh, it looks kind of goofy anyway. It's not the way I wanted it. It's not working. I'm going to create a new URL field later. It's in the dictionary. And, in fact, people can create a report on my person table on the URL field. I'm going to quickly make a bar chart for whatever reason.
<laughs> Love live demos that are not rehearsed. You don't know what you're going to get. And I get a whole bunch of orders. Zero, one, two, three, four, four, one hundred. Okay, everybody's got one. Now, later, someone says, nah, we really don't use that, and I don't want people reporting on it, I don't want them picking it. The other question was, I don't even want them to see it on the list. So, whether you do personalized list or configure list layout, it shouldn't show up. Because remember, lists are reports. They're just a list report. If I say configure list layout, okay, you'll obviously see there's the order field as well. Okay. What you can do, and I don't know the extent to which this affects the system. I know most of it, but I don't know all of it. Is let's go and configure the table. For my person's table, I have all my columns down here. And you notice, uh, I thought it was on here. It's not on here. Let's take order, drill into the order field on the person table, and uncheck active. Simply make it inactive. Do we have a hint? There's no hint. Boo! <laughs> when I make it inactive, watch this. I go back to the person's list. Not on there. I don't have it on here, so I can't pick it. It's like it vanished. The data is still there. It's just inactive. So if I have a business rule or a nightly script or something that's looking for that, those will continue to work. The data is there. The field is there. It's it's actually in Sys Dictionary. And if I say configure dictionary, Get this problem with the font being really large is sometimes scrolling gets a little weird. It's there, order, but it is not active. So if I try to do a report, let's do a high chart on people and pick the order field as a group by, for example, it's not there anymore. I've wiped it from the face of the earth, or at least visibility, even to admins. It's not there for all intents and purposes. 
but it is in the dictionary. So if I were going to create another order field, I couldn't obviously use the name order. It would go at, now I'm going to call it order underscore one, or you underscore order, or, or something of that, that nature. And hopefully people will get it, that this is a new one. Remember, you can't rename the field. You can relabel it, but you can't rename the database field name once it's been created. That would be bad juju left and right. Don't do it. So that was the discussion we had. Yes, you can deactivate fields. I've done it rarely. Usually I'm, I'm still in development before something goes to production, before I realize I don't need these. But oftentimes your requirements change, your application changes, and months or years later you realize this isn't doing anything for us. It's, it's just making a mess. Let's deactivate it. Rather than going around every form and every view and everything else and deactivating it and go, it's just, no, leave it alone. Uh, now the question becomes, what happens? So if I look at, I have one other question here. There's no order. It automatically took it off of the form. It says, hey, that's inactive. So the system's smart enough to say, your form has a placement for the order field. It's just not happening. It, it's just not there, so I'm not going to show because it's not active. If I put that back, let's do configure dictionary. A little faster than the two-click approach to go to the configure table and then drill into the order field. Actually, I guess it wasn't. And let, let's reactivate it. Everything it knew before is still in place. So it knows the form layout. There it is, exactly where it was. It knows to put it on reports where the report layout was. So we really take it off of an existing report. There's an interesting question. Let's do age. Our chart. And order. Next. Simple order report. Save that. And then we'll go deactivate it. Figure 
Was I could have gone into the record and done a configured dictionary. That would have been easier. Still two clicks away to get there. Deactivate that. What happens to my report that you used to use that? Reports. Down here, you run simple order. The report continues to work, but it's going to say group by none. So this may be a little confusing to somebody to say. What happened here? But if, if you're truly deactivating them, odds are nobody's using them anyway. So I I would consider this a low risk thing. You can't pick that field. It's going to continue to run on the order field. Interesting to know. Uh, I thought I had one, one other question I wanted to ask for curiosity's sake, but I, I can't remember it. So I think I'm going to end there, and if I remember it, I'll add it to tomorrow. Woo fun, fun. Let's do that button. I get to use my handy dandy stream deck button encoder again. Thank you very much for joining. I, I hope to see you again back real soon. Remember, if you learn something, be a friend, share it. You'll be helpful. And everybody will think you're a hero. Look what I got. I'm able to fake it this far. So, <laughs> take care. I will see you again.